So with all that out the way, let's uh, press Alt S, Alt G, Alt R, and place it back in the center. And we'll just create a quick shape involving box visualization. So getting started with box cutter, we'll just cut out a great deal of the shape. Look at it from top view, press Q, use ever scroll to recall this bull in, and we'll perform some subsequent cuts on it as well. And subsequent cuts on that as well. Just giving us a uh, little starter shape from the side. We can cut a few more angles in here, just letting Ingon do its thing. We can press Alt V and E in order to get the viewport just looking a little bit better. We can also press D, change over to box, and perform a cut. We can also perform a cut here, but we'll press W on the way down and use control in order to get a perfect wedge. We can press Alt. X in order to mirror and we will just press X to reset the mirror to the default and just simply add a mirror mod. We could have done it with new mirror as well, it didn't matter. But from this point we can now just go under mesh tools and if we alt click dice we can actually smart apply on the way in. But you could always just press S whenever you're in dice if you're needing to dice and smart apply on the way. Another thing is that, you know, the twist functionality of dice came over, meaning that you can press T and it'll exit you to twist whenever you click to apply your dice. So here's the result of us dicing and twisting this. So obviously this isn't correct. So we want to press F in order to flip, which also made it over all the classics of the previous dice we intended to keep in this new version of dice that is still on the expansion route. So even though this is flip, we want to select these in faces and just delete them, giving us something like this. And from here, I like to press QOT and use uh, Q operations and two shape. And from here, press space bar, change it over to a cylinder. We can just click and select these two faces after applying and just delete them. After selecting everything, we can just press E, right click, Alt S and just push this out. You know, kind of the laziest way to do things. And GG, slide this in and Q S sharpen and things are looking good so far. However, looking at the shape as a whole, you know, faceting isn't going to work for this considering that we diced this to a very smooth amount. So this is where I would actually go under add modifiers. And if we alt click on subdivision, that means we'll send a subdivision to the top of the stack, basically allowing us to up res the lower uh, res version of the model without getting to the modification of it. So let's just press control A and visual geometry to mesh. And if we look at our geometry, we see have a bunch of extra loops that are not needed. So we could just press Q, go under add modifiers, decimate, and things will get cleaned up pretty nice just with the decimate modifier. However, we could also do it destructively by just cleaning the mesh, which is also very nice. So clean mesh was actually a little too harsh. In this case, it might be better for us to just manually dissolve these edges, just so we still have edge selection at this point. And with this edge selection, we could just control click mark in order to just bevel this edge. We could press one in order to force our profile to be 1.5. Uh, and from here, we're now looking at our near finished object. So even going back into bevel, I like going into bevel from object mode because whenever I press shift P and I begin scrolling through the profiles, it just looks a lot better. So usually I'll find a nice profile that just gives a lot, not a lot of detail. We now have default pre default boat, default bevel profiles added to hard up. So it should be easier for users to get started with them. We'll press QOT again in order to bring in another cylinder and we'll control roll the wheel in order to just place this shape below. And we could press S and Z in order to scale this in. By sharpening it, we we're able to auto mark the edges that we want creased, meaning that we could just press Control 1 and bevel this as well. And we could even select the shape and just Control click bevel to add a bevel modifier, roll it down below segments. And we just have a little bit of delineation between those two surfaces. So the next thing from here is putting some sort of light rings on the inside. So we will just look at our object. Obviously this object is still modified heavily. So let's just press Q and shift click smart apply in order to get a smart apply duplicate. And if we look at this from top view, we want this loop and we want this loop. And so 
I'll just press Control I, flip that, and we're just going to select the vertices directly in the center. Press Control plus plus plus, you know, just a couple of times. Control I, invert it, get rid of them, and we could just drag this up and just select the endpoints and extrude them down. And in order to give us more flexibility with our bevel, we will just dissolve a few points and press Control Shift B in order to bevel individually, but we want to apply our scale first. Just so whenever we perform this bevel, it's actually nice and smooth. With this shape, we can control click Smart Apply, which will convert it to a curve, giving us this. And looking at it from top view, we can from here just choose to convert this to a mesh, giving us more options in the Q menu where we can go to radial array and just control click it in order to perform a radial array around the 3D cursor, giving us this as our result. So finally, we can press QOT, bring up another cylinder, but we got a control scroll to reset it back to its initial position. And this will do. And we'll just raise it up slightly, sharpen it, put a level of subdivision on it, add a bevel to the edge, and then under the Alt-M menu, we want to shift-click blank material, which will set this to be a glass material, and we'll just hide that. We'll select this piece, and we'll just Alt-click to give it a emission material. With everything else selected, we could just Control-click blank material to give everything a unique material. And if we press Alt-H, press 1, we are now looking at our near final result. However, if we jump over to our render, we could see kind of what our render materials gave us. So for this object, we could just shift click on material scroll in order to scroll through other iterations of a different material that could have been. And so with something like this, we could then go back in and play with our map scroll, press E a couple of times to just bring up random maps until we find one that really suits this particular surface. And we may even want to hold control and move our mouse in order to adjust our scale in the 3D view. Hold control shift, maybe affect the normal just slightly. We can still press N or E actually to jump to random images until we find just a perfect image. So maybe something a little more subtle. And as far as bloom goes, my favorite way to activate bloom in the 3D view is just to press Alt VV to go into my viewport adjustment. And after finding the right HDR to have as my background, I can press Q and activate Bloom as well. And if we press Shift Space, we could just let this play back. All right, however, we want to continue on because we're not done yet. So this shape is relatively simple. However, we do want to um, give ourselves a little bit of trouble to solve. So first things first is I'm going to slice off the top and we're also going to slice off the bottom. And from here, we'll just switch over to Ingon and perform a cut like so, but that cut isn't trouble enough. We want to make it even more difficult. So we want to press B and then roll the wheel a little bit. We see that we have about for segments that'll do as far as solving goes. I'm always thinking about solving whenever it comes to looking at the geometry. So for this to really pop into render, it's going to need a bevel. But if we press Alt V, we can see that we have some flows that are running counter to each other. So getting them to really transition to each other is going to be a bit of an art unless we were to either transfer normals or really work the topology. And in this case, I'll opt for working the topology. Let's just go under operations and we'll hit it with a smart apply. And I'm just going to control click loops all the way around until I'm back. And the first thing we want to do is quarantine this area and protect it. So I'm going to shift click mark, which will put me in the select tool. And if we press B, we could actually bevel this edge. And we want to do the same thing with this area. However, we want to look at the geometry and make sure there's not any like super near misses. And there are. So it's. Do we want to sacrifice topological integrity in order to get rid of these near misses? I guess so. So sometimes in these cases, I experiment with different strategies for dealing with geometry. But in this case, we'll settle for these near misses. But for this one, we'll hand this one off to a different vertice just to ensure that nothing happens with the topology. We'll select this edge 
and control click to this edge. And I just got to remind users that, you know, whenever I'm in the, the heat of working, this process happens in like 30 seconds. So, you know, it may seem slow in videos, but it really isn't in, in my actual life. I get in and just handle these things. So I could have auto verti, auto verti mergey. God, I'm having a stroke today, you guys. But if I have um, auto vert mer merging on, then we don't have to actually go through and manually merge these things. But we do see that there are some SKUs indicating that there could have been some handoffs chosen in advance that probably would have better held this surface. However, every time I solve this geometry, I feel like I learned something new about just how fickle geometry is as far as it being held together and how little is actually required to convey a surface. But, you know, that's a talk for another video. So you might have also noticed that I did this partially. That's because I could press Alt-X, scroll to something like symmetry, shift click on X to keep mirror, and then click on Y to do Y and be done with Y. So if we press Alt-V and we get out of our wireframe, we see that it looks like we did nothing at all. However, now we can control click bevel and we can just really add a bevel there and the surface will hold together. So, you know, you're, you're probably thinking, wow, that's cool. But, you know, could you do it twice? Sure. I got to Let's um, get in here. Q. Smart apply. And let's evaluate our crash scene. So first thing is we want to keep all this. There is a decimate modifier involved in the construction of this. So that's why everything's cleaned up like this and we'll just shift click mark we're already in select tool if you're in merge under m you can just press s and jump back over to select and we'll just press b you know lately we've been focusing a lot on merge but select is still great you know these these tools are so theoretical right now but one day they will approach their final versions like even now we're discussing the uh, next level of the topo tool of uh, kind of what select tool is to become but a degree of planning is uh, preferred. It, it saves pain on the on the coding room floor. So let's just uh, select this edge, control select this other edge, and we have our area set up. We'll shift click mark and we'll press B in order to protect our parameter. And we see that the further we go, the more skewed our parameter gets and that there are some realignments. I'm telling you, every time I look at this, I just see automatic solutions that are handling these things where you know, a system would exist that would basically read these edges skewing and automatically jump them over to the next nearest junction. Because in the end, all we care about is this parameter. We could delete all of this geometry and reconstruct everything in between with really efficient quad geometry if needed. But for the most part, if you can protect a the perimeter, then you can easily add a bevel to these things, even though they're like curvy shapes on curvy shapes and get a nice result. I mean, I don't even know if I put a weighted normal on this shape. That's how easy the process was. So let's just jump over to our render now. And with this very large bevel happening and this distinct shape change, we now have a much nicer result. So while this isn't a cue box, we'll save this as a um, solenoid. Maybe not a... Um, Let's, uh, let's go with a cylindrical because a solenoid is uh, indicative of a, a particular caliber of workflow. So we're not even getting all mod crazy today. Really, we're just in here talking about dice, but I wanted to end the result talking about some of the other tools connected to the workflow and also, you know, dice in a more practical setting and getting a more finalized result. But with that, we can begin moving on to the next part.